Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. There is a group out of uh, Dallas, Texas, a group of men in Highland Hills that are policing the neighborhood with guns. They are armed um, and they are black men. I don't know if any other groups of people are joining with them in this, but what I'm looking at are black men who have taken it upon themselves to police and patrol this neighborhood. Uh, they are saying that they are not there policing, nor are they trying to be security guards, but what they are doing is trying to bring a little more security to the community. Uh, they actually call themselves community engagement activists, okay? And so, because they have a right to bear arms, they are using that right. Um, I want to say this up front, that there are other racial groups that already do this. They patrol neighborhoods armed, okay, because they have that right. And so these men have that right too. And so they're not there to make trouble. They're actually there to keep the peace. And they've made that very clear that they want to help stop the trouble and the crime in their own community. Now, this is very similar to something that I've talked about here on the channel, where I do believe that black men around this country should patrol and police their own communities. Um, I believe it should even be to the point where there is a phone number that um, citizens can call if there is trouble in the community that they call this group of men that live within the community who are there to defuse the situation and not there to take a life, okay? Uh, they're not there to commit any crimes or anything like that, but they want to defuse the situation uh, so that innocent black people are not dead because someone thinks they have a weapon when all they have is a phone. Um, someone can't just come in and take their life because they have Skittles and an iced tea. Uh, there will be higher standards because we're not there to take out our own, but there to lessen crime. With that presence of brothers there, this brotherhood that they are trying to establish, uh, those who will commit crimes will think twice, okay? But the only difference is because they are members of this community, because they care about the people in this community, um, they're not going to show up ready to blow someone's brains out. That sounds fair to me. It really sounds fair and the police should be very thankful that this is one less situation that they have to deal with since so many of them uh, fear for their lives and they feel unsafe um, even when it's a child. I mean they feel unsafe with Tamir Rice, correct? 12 year old boy with a toy gun. The officer felt unsafe within two seconds not even assessing the situation to even determine that this was a child. Wouldn't you say officers that it's fair that people who are not afraid of these 12 year olds that they police their own communities and if there is a, situ a situation to where someone is there who doesn't want to abide by the rules who doesn't want to uh, stay within the law that's when we call you guys and then you can just haul them off okay um, but for simple things uh, like the uh, wellness check where the young lady lost her life because a frightened police officer looking through her window feared for his life within seconds shot her dead right in front of her nephew. So what would have happened had she just called people who live there and they came and checked on her? You see, armed of course. If they are armed, if there is trouble and they have to defend themselves, that's different. But not going there with the intent. Maybe they would have stood back and assessed things a little differently and better and not just ran up to the window looked in and shot her dead she'd still be alive you see and so what i'm thinking is this is a great idea because again people who live in the community won't be as trigger happy unless something else is going on you want to tell us about is there a reason why so-called black people are ending up dead in their own living rooms young man both of shim john just in his house just living and then Someone knocks on the wrong door and boom, he's gone. So this right here, I think, is an excellent idea that we need to implement around this country within the law, okay? Not breaking any laws, but saying, look, 
um, we we don't we may not want to call on you so often since you all are so afraid. Okay, we will call uh, our community activists. As a matter of fact, what do they call themselves again? Let me get this completely right. And of course, each state or each city may have their own name for their own group, or maybe they uh, should establish some type of nationwide group. But what they are calling themselves are community engagement activists. Maybe instead of calling the police who are always afraid, of, afraid for their lives, maybe people who live in the community can call the community engagement activists, you see, and say, look, we have a situation. Uh, there's someone uh, with their door open. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, we want you to do a wellness check. And so the community engagement activists might show up, um, assess the situation from a distance instead of pulling up with their weapons drawn. Of course, they will have their weapons because they have a right to carry. Okay, of course, you want to make sure you know the laws in your area. But maybe the community engagement activists wouldn't have shot that young woman in front of her nephew. Maybe they would have made a, may have had enough patience to say, let us call out and see if someone's in there. Let us slow down before we just roll up on the situation and take a life. Let us slow down and assess things so that these men who are constantly in fear for their lives could just sit back and chill for a bit. And we can call them when we need to have them remove someone from the community who does not want to abide by the rules. So I'm, I'm already liking this. This is something I've talked about on this channel. Um, recently and in times past, I've said that we should take over the policing of our own communities so that so many people won't end up uh, innocently shot because someone thought they had a weapon or someone thought they were doing this or thought they were doing that. I mean, for goodness sake, we have people being shot in the back. How much danger can a person's back be to you when you have a weapon? When you become afraid of a person's back, you probably need to stay away from the people who um, have such big backs that, you af that you're afraid for your life. Okay, family, I know that I've made the point that I'm trying to make here. I know that I've made the point. Um, but I think, and even with a little sarcasm, hopefully you all can understand where I'm coming from. Those of you with the badges who... Uh, will shoot like the, the incident in Missouri where a Missouri woman was shot in her back because an officer said she thought she was pulling her taser but she shot this woman in her back who already had health issues and so now she has permanent health issues because this frightened female police officer white female police officer shot her in the back so if the people who thought that this black woman was doing something who really turned out not to be doing anything, she was just buying two balloons and they thought she was shoplifting, come to find out she was not. Anyway, she's paralyzed, unable to work, but had someone just called the community, what, is it, what are they called again? Engagement activist. Maybe this woman wouldn't be in the situation that she's in. You see, so this is this is great. I think I like this. As a matter of fact, I think I love it. We should do more of this. Uh, we should form nationwide community groups. I don't know if it would be called this. We may have another name for it. But I think those who live within the communities should be the ones to patrol the communities. And if need be, if they have to call the police, they can at least call up and say, look, we've apprehended ABC or Brother Macaroni or whatever his name is. Um, he's not behaving well. We have the situation under control. He is constrained right now. Come and get him. You don't need to come with your, your guns drawn. We've already put him in constraints. Okay? And of course, you would have to come up with some type of um, agreement with local law enforcement so that no one could sue you for um, unlawful imprisonment, even though they were committing a crime. You have to say, look, this is what we're doing in our community, 
okay? We are going to have people call us so that lives, innocent lives don't have to be taken or people don't have to be injured or hurt because someone's frightened. But if someone is out of control, we will have our group of men keep this person alive, not blowing his brains out, but we're going to keep him alive, constrain him until you get here. And then from there, you take over. You don't have to come in afraid anymore. We got that part handled for you because we will handle the situation before you get here. Let me know what you think in the comments section, family, about what this group is doing and about the possibility of this being a nationwide effort. With that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.